Hello there. In this screencast, I'm going to present to you how to do a simple simulation of a distillation column in Aspen Hysis. I'm going to simulate the first of two distillation columns in a plant that produces cumin. As you can see in this PFD, the input feed to the first distillation column is stream number 10 while the distillate and the bottom streams are number 11 and 12 respectively. Here in the stream table, we see from stream number 10 that the feed contains the cumin with a large amount of benzene as well as other impurities. Based on the bottom compositions, which is stream number 12, we see that the distillation column is successful in separating almost all of the cumin with minor benzene and paradiisopropyl benzene impurities, which will be removed in the second distillation column. Moving on, we start our simulation by entering the species. The first four are easy to find and add. The first one is benzene added. The second one is propylene, which is also known as propene. We can add it. The next one is propane added. Cumene is the fourth one. And finally, the last one, paradiisopropyl benzene. It is much easier to add it by its chemical formula rather than its name. So if you change here to formula and add its chemical formula, which is C12H18, you will find the 1,4 isomer of this compound, which is the para isomer, and you can add it. Now go ahead and select the fluid package. My favorite is PRSV, but don't ask why. Now that the basic setup is completed, you can go to the simulation environment. Start off by adding the distillation column subflow sheet. You can modify it by double clicking on it. Start by naming the material streams and naming the energy streams. Set the condenser as a total condenser because we don't have very low boiling point gases. So that will not cause any issues with the simulation. You don't have to worry about the number of stages for a simple simulation. Clicking next. Also here you don't have anything to worry about. All right. Now the pressure entering the column is 1.75 bar. You can take my word for it or go check it in the streams table. But since we are going to take a look there anyway, we might as well look at the bottom's pressure. Here the bottom pressure is 1.9 bar. If we go back to the PDF, we can see that stream 12 is directly leaving the bottom of the distillation column, which means that the increase from 1.75 bar to 1.9 bar occurred in the stripping section. So we can safely assume that in the rectifying section from the feed to the top, there will also be a 0.25 bar pressure drop. So we can enter these values here. I got lucky here and found what pressures to enter. In another scenario, you would estimate the pressure change or use some rule of thumb. The data here are optional and you do not have to enter them, so you can click next. Finally, you get to enter the reflux ratio and the distillate rate. The distillate rate is stream 11, so you can find it in the stream table and enter it. Stream 11 flow rate is 106.89. And you're done. 
for the reflux ratio it is also specified in the document can go ahead and find it our distillation column is T801 and the reflux ratio is 0.44 Now the distillation column will not converge at this stage because you have not entered the data for your feed stream. So you can go ahead and start entering these data. The temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. The pressure is 1.75 bar. We're going to have the total molar flow rate calculated automatically by entering the flow rate of the species now if you try and run the simulation you will have it converged but let's go ahead and check our composition in the distillate and bottoms. Can change the basis here to mole flow. So let's compare the values from the actual data and the simulation. In the bottoms feed, stream 12 is supposed to have around 92.68 moles of cumin, which is what we got. We're supposed to have 2.79 PDIPB, which is exactly what we got. And we're supposed to have some small flow rate of benzene, which is also what we got. If you fine tune the, your distillation column, you might be able to replicate these data exactly. You can change the tray efficiency. You can change the sizing of the column. You can change the number of stages. And perhaps if you do all that, you'll get exact matching data. But as I mentioned, for a basic simulation, such information might not be needed. Signing off, I want to thank you for the time you took to view this screencast.